David Rajan, Dr. Ortiz and family, all of our pastors who are present, and brothers and sisters, my beloved brother, John Lucas, and his family, Brother Vinny, John and his family, and all those who are assembled here this morning, especially the newlyweds. Alan and Sherry, what a joy that I could be here this morning with all of you, and I greet all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus. It is a joyful occasion because yesterday we saw Alan and Sherry being joined together in the holy wedlock by the Lord Himself. Today we are going to have two baby dedications. It was in 1914, uh, 2014, January, and I had the joy of officiating Robin and Benita's wedding. And what a joy that we are going to see this, this child being dedicated to the Lord today. I wanted to be in this church for a long time. I have a feeling that I am attending a church, attending, attending the church that my dad passed five years ago in Mokhatala. I bring greetings to you from Grace International Assembly of God, the church that we serve. And from my father, Pastor Kedia Joseph, who is celebrating his 89th year of life, writing his 13th book right now. And the topic of the 13th book is old age, what the Bible, the Word of God speaks about old age. And uh, what a joy that, that we all could be here today in the presence of the Lord. When I think about the Mokhatala church, God used many families. The most important family was Warren Youth family. I'm glad that they are, some of the family members are here. I don't want to mention names, so that will take a long time. And then the family. I grew up in Mokhatala. So everyone belonging to the Warwick family and Chamba, Chamba Motel family became my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I love each one of them very deeply. Now church in Mughathala has become a wonderful place of worship, having several hundred people attending that church. We heard a great message from God's word through, us, through God's servant. When Brother John Lucas called me and a few days ago and asked me to speak, he asked me to bring a message in relation to the dedication of these two babies that God has given us. So this morning, briefly, with the time that is before me, I would like to speak from God's word found in the book of Psalms, Psalm 127. Look what the scripture says about godly family. Psalm 127 and 128 speaks about the blessings of God's people, families of God, who follows the Lord in the fear of the Lord. So today, the message is very practical. I hope the newlyweds and all those who are listening will pay attention that the word of God that the Lord has given me to speak to you will make a deep resonance in the depth 
of your hearts today, making a lasting impact upon your life. The psalmist says here, Psalm 127, I wanted to read 122, but to save time, just read the 127th Psalm. Can we all stand together and read the scripture? I'm reading it in English, but you follow it. Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand God in vain. In vain you rise early and stand, stay, stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those who he loves. Sons, that includes daughters also, are a heritage from the Lord, children, a reward from him, like arrows in the hands of a warrior, are sons born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose cure is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies in the gate. You may be seated. The topic that I want to speak and the Lord's Holy Spirit has given to me to bring to you today is plans for building a Christian home. I want to say hello to Dangachan. He was a member of our church in Angel and my dad was has passed in the church long time ago. What a joy to see you both. Listen to this, friends, and I hope the children also will pay attention. Tony Campolo, in his book, Growing Up in America, states, today's parents are bewildered and not quite sure how to do the job. Confused about their role, they look to experts hoping to find clear instruction, but no such luck. The experts are just as confused as parents. Sociologists offer conflicting opinions for parents to, to follow. Opinions about even the most basic aspects of parenting change dramatically from one year to the next. And I want to present to you the best manuscript that gives clear direction about how to build a strong household and that manuscript is God's way. Can we lift our hands and thank the Lord for the word of God. The word of God. I will say this to you friends, we are living in a very difficult time in the world and especially in the United States. The attempt of Satan, the devil, is to create a genderless, moralless society. So as believers in Christ, we have a great responsibility to give instructions of God's word to our children at home and in the church can someone say amen? amen it's very important because they will not get these instructions in their schools and in the colleges and universities that they will attend psalm 127 tells us the importance of having the lord as the builder of the house if you look into the title it says that the psalm is a song for Solomon, so people think that probably David, his father, wrote this psalm for Solomon. Because he was going to build the temple and build the city of Jerusalem. We are not sure if it is David who wrote the psalm. 
Probably Solomon wrote it himself because he was going to build the temple and the city of Jerusalem. But this is a very important psalm. And in this psalm, the scripture teaches us that God himself should be the builder, as we just heard, the architect of our homes, our home and family. And if you look at a building, a house, a, a building has three main components. What are the three main components of a house? The foundation, the walls, and the roof. This morning, briefly, I would like to speak about these three aspects of a house. The foundation, the walls, and the roof. The foundation. The most important aspect of a building is its foundation. This building cannot stand here without a strong foundation. We are able to sit here comfortably because this building has a strong foundation. Foundation is important when we are building a Christian home. Apostle Paul tells us on which foundation we should build our home. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11 he says, another foundation can no man lay than that which is Christ, Jesus. So Jesus is the foundation on which we should be building a life, a career, a business, and especially a home. Our Lord spoke this and Gospel writer Matthew records it in chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. Speaks about two builders. So the Lord Jesus calls it our attention on two men who went to build his house. One man built his house on the sand. The rains came and the floods descended and beat upon the house. And it fell because it was built upon the sand. Why that house fell? Because that house had no foundation. I'm asking this question to every parent listening to me. Do you, are you building your lives on a strong foundation on the solid rock? And his name is Jesus. The other man also built a house, but his house was built on the rock, the solid foundation of a rock. This house was also subjected to winds, rains, water, but it stood because it was built on solid foundation. Jesus spoke here about those who hear his word and acts upon them. I want you to know that you and me as Malayalis are privileged to hear great preachers. Because we have our family conferences, the Pentecostal conference, and we in our churches has always visiting ministries. Fantastic preachers preaching the word of God to us. But I have news for you, if you and me do not practice the word, if we do not become the doers of the word, this word do not have any meaning in your life. We should become doers of God's word. And those who are practicing and become doers of the word of God are the ones who are building on strong foundation their families. Praise God. And if you are building your house, your family on the solid rock, his name is Jesus. You will never be disappointed. You will be able to withstand everything that comes against your life. The purpose of the word of God and the purpose of Christian life is to prepare us to face every challenge that we face in this 
earthly pilgrimage that we are doing as believers in Christ. Strong foundation. I came to the Lord, came to the Lord at age nine. Was baptized in the Holy Spirit the day after I came to know Jesus. Was baptized in a pond in Mukhatala when I was 12 years old. At age 16, Jesus called me to be his servant in the church hall where I was sleeping. Had communion with Christ for three and a half hours. The Lord said, I want you to become my full-time servant. And I said, yes. From the next week onwards, I began to proclaim Christ in street meetings. Friends, build your house, your life on Christ, you will stand. Praise God. Time is running away from me, for I have to speak about the walls. If you look into a simple house, the simple house has four walls, and the four walls of the house, the house not only really has a foundation, it has four walls also. What are the four walls? And I will give, I will give you four walls quickly. The number one wall that you should build in your family as husband and wife, as parents, as grandparents is the wall of prayer. The wall of prayer. For the same goes a family that prays together, stays together. We just heard about Job. Job's children also grew up in his house and they had fish. But after their peace with their friends, Job did something which is, some, which is something that we need to emulate as believers in Christ. He offered sacrifices for their purification and prayed to the Lord Jehovah regularly. Parents, grandparents, build walls of prayer. Amen. Walls of prayer. My mom used to pray systematically every day. Three hours. I'm not calling attention to my own prayer life. But I, when God gave me three children, two boys and a girl in the middle, we used to have prayer time at our home regularly with our children every day, every night, one hour. Where I will do instructions, I will give them instructions from God's word and pray with them. But after they went to sleep in their own rooms, we've caught, without them knowing I will go into their rooms, without making any noise, stretch my right hand over them and used to pray for them. I want you to know that more than their education and professional achievements, the greatest blessing that God has given me and Elsie, my wife, is that all three of them, along with their spouses and our two grandchildren, serves the Lord today. Build a wall of prayer, my friends, in your home. Your home should become a house of prayer. Can someone say amen to that? Your home should become a house of worship. Hallelujah. I have some scriptures that I want to re read to you. Let me, oh boy. <laughs> Let me hurry through this. The second wall is communication. Communication. Wall of prayer. Wall of communication. Most of the problems within the family can be traced to lack of communication or miscommunication. If you will notice when sin came into the home of the first family, Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3, immediately, immediately there was breakdown in the communication. In the connectedness between man and wife, the first couple and the Lord. Adam said, the woman thou gavest me. Caused me to sin. He stops communicating. Begin 
the blaming business. The woman also began blaming the serpent. You see, friends, communication broke down between Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve and the Lord. And I want you to know that never allow any communication that is not godly in your personal life. Can someone say amen? amen. Our self-centeredness, our sin-affected selfishness, war, our communication, and we start pointing and blaming. We need to stop being negative communicators such as I don't want to have anything to do with you or are not for all you are not worth me responding to, to, responding to, to, responding to. Friends, we should be speaking as if we represent Christ. Words that are tasteful, sweet, and words that will bring us each other, each, bring us together. We need to build a wall of communication where we will speak openly, express words of care, grace, and concern. Praise God. Amen. And so, wall of prayer, wall of good communication, then the third wall that we need to build is trust. Relationship can last, or no relationship can last without trust. It doesn't matter if it is a business relationship, a treaty between two countries, or marriage relationship, or even relationship with God. Good relationship is always built on trust. It is important for the existence of a home that a wall of trust be erected. Look what happened to the house of David when the wall of trust was broken within the family. Tragedies one and up, one after another. And then the fourth wall is the wall of flexibility, a moving wall. This wall is a movable, movable, movable wall. This wall is the wall of grace and mercy. This will become effective when members within the family become sensitive to each other's needs and respond to each other accordingly. Christians. And being gracious to one another help us to build the wall of flexion. There was an ad in, in a newspaper journal, Lawrence Journal World, that said, we will, that said, we will oil your sewing machine and adjust the tension in your home for only one dollar. If only it were possible to adjust the tension in our homes for only one dollar. Is there anyone listening to me having tension at home? Bring Jesus into your life. The tensions will relax. Most of us, are, most of us would pay $1,000 of $1,000 or even $10,000 if it would truly adjust tension in our homes. Walls of prayer. Walls of wall of communication. War of trust and flexibility and the house will not be completed with a roof and I have only two three minutes let me get get this across to you what is the roof of the Christian home in first Peter chapter 4 verse 8 the apostle Peter writes above all that's the roof keep fervent in your love for one another because love covers a multitude of sins the roof of a Christian home should be the love of God. Can anyone describe the love of, love of God today? No one can describe God's love. Apostle Paul says, love never fails. He knew everything else would fail. There are times when we don't have enough patience, enough understanding, enough strength, enough wisdom, enough resources, enough money, enough time. So we live in the limitations of life. But we can keep on doing one thing. And that is we can keep on loving. Amen. Become good lovers in the family, in, in the house. Praise God. Praise God. When you have the love of God as the roof.
of your family life, your home. You shall experience unspeakable joy and peace in life. Allow the Lord to build your lives and home. He should be the chief architect and the chief engineer of every spiritual home. Praise God. Praise God. Give him first and foremost place in life. I want to give you the story. The story I wanted to share a whole lot about George Washington's mother, about Abraham Lincoln's mother, about the mother of Saint against Augustine. Read about those mothers. The mothers in the Bible, Hannah. Read about her. Leaving a godly legacy for your children should be the goal of all Christian parenting. Today, two parents will come and dedicate their children to the Lord. God gave them that gift. I have to say this to you. God is the fountain of life. All life belongs to him. No man has the authority to take life before birth or after birth. Can someone say amen? amen. Although the faith and godliness of your children is our humility, the work of the Holy Spirit. Parents, listen to me. God often uses the influence of parents to make great impact on their children. We find a great example of this through the history and story of Jonathan Edwards, the Puritan preacher from the 1700s that God used to bring the great awakening into the New England that taken over the continent of North America and all over the world. Jonathan Edwards and his wife, Sarah, left a great godly legacy for their 11 children. At the turn of the 20th century, American educator and pastor A. E. Winship decided to trace out the descendants of Jonathan Edwards almost 150 years after his death. His findings are astounding, listen to this, especially when compared to a man known as Max Dukes and his wife who lived around the same time of Jonathan Edwards' life on earth. Dukes legacy, he was a wicked, cruel man, a criminal. Dukes legacy came to the forefront when the family trees of 42 different men in the New York prison system trace back to him. Max Duke's descendants included seven murderers, 60 thieves, 50 women of debauchery, 130 other convicts, 310 paupers. With over 2,300 2, years living in poor houses, 400 who were physically wrecked by indulgent living. It was estimated that Max Duke's descendants cost the state of New York more than $1,250,000 in those years to house them in different prisons. Look at the example of Jonathan Edwards. Jonathan Edwards Godly legacy includes one U.S. Vice President, three U.S. Senators, three Governors, three Mayors, 13 College Presidents, 30 Judges, 65 Professors, 80 Public Office Holders, 100 Lawyers, and 100 Missionaries. Two life, two choices, and two destinies. This morning, I am making a challenge to every father and mother and every parent, grandparents listening to me. What is the choice that you are making today? 
The parents are bringing the babies for dedication, but its actual dedication is take, should be taken by the parents themselves. The children, actually, the children are presented before the Lord in thanksgiving. So, friends, look at the scripture. We heard about Abraham. Abraham made a choice. His nephew, Lot, made another choice. Abraham's choice, Lot's choice. Abraham's choice led, is leading him, as actually led him to the new Jerusalem. Lot's choice led him to Sodom and Gomorrah. I want you to know the potential of these two children are immense. And we should fortify these children and their families with great prayer. Can every parent and every grandparent stand with me in the presence of the Lord? Every parent and grandparent, stand with me. Only one moment of dedication before we actually get into the baby dedication service. Lift your hands before the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Start worshiping the Lord. Dedicating that parents, parents yourself unto the Lord. We are living in a wicked and perverse generation. But you and me as believers in Christ can make a difference in this world. For God wants us to become lights in the world and the salt of the earth. Never allow the devil to rob the destiny of your children. Fortify them in prayer. For God has great potential for every children represented by those who are standing before the Lord today. Lord, I thank you for the parents and grandparents who are standing here today in your presence. Lord, I pray that you will grant them the grace and the wisdom and the understanding to raise their children and become a great in spiritual influence upon their children and grandchildren in the days ahead so that we will build homes on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ our Savior. That our generation Generations, if your coming is delayed, shall become a generation that declare the gospel glory in this land and around, and around the world. And the two children that will be dedicated and presented before the Lord, today shall be blessed by you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that, that you will protect them. It is our prayer, Lord, every child that is represented by those parents who are standing and grandchildren who are represented. It is our prayer, Lord, that you will, you will protect every child, every child, every child. That the arrows of the enemy shall not, shall not find success, but you will protect them and shield them. In the word, with the word of God and with the faith and prayer of their parents. And we thank you and praise you for speaking to our hearts today. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Can we give the Lord a clap over your praise? Can we give the Lord, Lord a clap over your praise? Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, Brother John Luke.